Welcome to the EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Rupneet Lali and today we will be discussing the module related to infrastructure, accommodation and overcrowding. The main objectives of this module are to know the different types of prison and prison structure available in the country, to know about the nature and extent of the problem of prison overcrowding and to understand about the prison system in India. Prison institutions are known by different names in different countries. They may be known as correctional places, correctional houses. They may also be known as jails, detention centers, remand centers, and so forth. The earlier notion of prison was as a house of captives in which the inmates were forcibly confined and deprived of their liberty. They were deprived of their rights and they were given punishment. Prison was the punishment. It wasn't a place for reformation. However, this purpose of prisons has changed from retribution and punishment towards reformation and rehabilitation. And this has been a change in a penal philosophy. It has also now that we are finding that prisons are correctional places where facilities are there for prisoners to reform and they are no longer sent to prison just merely to punish them. In India, prisons have been included in entry number four under prison reformatory Boston institutions and other institutions of like nature. And they come under the state list, list two in the seventh schedule of the Constitution of India. So it is a state subject and the management of prisons is regulated by the Prison Act of 1894 and the different prison manuals, which are prepared by various states which are based on the ground situations. The principles law relating to prisons and their management is the Constitution of India, the Prison Act of 1894, the Prisoners Act of 1900, the Prisoners Attendance and Courts Act 1955, the Prisoners Act of 1950, the Repatriation of Prisoners Act 2003, the Identification of Prisoners Act 1920, the Model Prison Manual of 2003 and now 2016, the Mental Health Act of 1987, the Probation of Offenders Act 1958, the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 and the Indian Penal Code of 1860. Each state has its own prison manual which specifies the rules and regulations for the administration and management of prisons. Many states have revised their prison manuals and they have emphasized on reformation and rehabilitation of offenders in society. Uh, the Prison Act of 1894 was a punitive act and the prisons now in different states and union territories have several tiers of jails. The most common and standard jail institutions which are in existence are the central prisons, the district prisons and the sub jails. Uh, there are other uh, establishments like the women jails, the Boston schools, the open jails and special jails. Maharashtra has the highest number of prisons in the country, 154, followed by Tamil Nadu 137 and Rajasthan by 126. Uh, whereas Arunachal Pradesh, which is a small state, has only two district prisons. Prison statistics tell us of 2015 that there are 1,401 prisons of different types with an authorized capacity of 3 lakh and 66,000. Uh, in India, the central prisons, the district prisons and the women jails and the special jails uh, that are existing, uh, they, the focus is on making prisons uh, safe and a secure place and prisoners are sent there by the courts after trial or during remand and the reformation and rehabilitation task is now one important purpose of the prison department which is also now known as the Department of Correctional Administration in some states like West Bengal, Himachal Pradesh, Kerala. Uh, which have also introduced a new act. The central jails house mainly the convicts. The district jails house mainly the under trials at the district level. Whereas the sub jails now house only under trials at the subdivisional level. However, the distinction between central jails and district jails has almost vanished because you find that under trials and convicts uh, are housed together in one jail. And in bigger districts, sub jails are open and they are at the subdivision level where they mainly have under trial prisoners. You also have revenue lockups in some state and civil prisons in use, but these are not under the prison department, they are managed by the revenue authorities. 
And if we look at the central jails, the criteria for a jail to be categorized as a central jail, it differs from state to state. However, the common feature which is observed is that the prisoners who are sentenced to long-term prisoner, uh, where maybe imprisonment for life or more than two years of imprisonment, they are confined in the central prisons. And these prisons have a larger capacity in comparison to the other jails. And they, are, they will also have rehabilitation facilities. Madhya Pradesh has the highest number of central jails, uh, followed by Maharashtra, Punjab, Rajasthan and Tamil Nadu. And uh, other states also have central prisons. However, few of the states uh, will not have any central prison like uh, Andaman, Nicobar, Dadra, Damanwini, Lakshadweep. They will not. They do not have any central jail in their territory. Uh, the capacity of prison inmates and in uh, these central jails in respect to the states indicates that uh, you know prison states like Punjab will have uh, fifteen thousand, Maharashtra around fourteen thousand, and Tamil Nadu with again fourteen thousand, and they are followed by other states like Rajasthan, uh, Jharkhand, Uttar Pradesh, which have around seven, around nearly 8,000 as such. And this, uh, these states have a huge capacity to house uh, prisoners in the district prison or in the central prison. Uh, the district jails, uh, they serve as the main prison in some of the states. So there will be some states which have more district jails than the central jails. And these are states like Uttar Pradesh, which has 57 district prisons, district jails, followed by Madhya Pradesh, which has 39. Bihar has 31, Maharashtra has 28, and Haryana has 16. Uh, so these district jails, uh, in uh, they have a capacity Part of uh, the accommodation part and the categorization can be seen from the prison statistics which are published by the NCRB every year and you get to know how many types of prisons are there and the accommodation that is available, what is the authorized capacity. Uh, Karnataka and Assam have the capacity of lodging a large number of inmates in their district jails. Now generally district jails in some of the states have uh, comparatively uh, higher capacity than the central prisons as such and uh, they will also have more capacity to have female inmates so some uh, states will not have any women prison but they will have the women inmates in the district prisons as such then we have the sub jails now these sub jails are uh, prevalent in at the subdivision level there are nine states which have comparatively higher number of sub jails can you guess which are those states? Now these are set up at the lower formation. So states like Maharashtra has 100 sub jails. Andhra is very close with 99 and Odisha with 73. A uh, number of states have these sub jails, uh, whereas some states have no sub jail at all. Can you guess which state? Well, Arunachal, Haryana, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Chandigarh, Delhi have no sub jail. Can you guess a state with the highest capacity of inmates in various sub jails? That's Orissa. And some states have uh, a capacity ranging from 3,000 to 4,000 in the sub jails as such. And these are mainly housed, housing under trials, and the officer in charge of these uh, prisons is the subdivisional magistrate. So he's not a prison officer. Another category of prisons is the women prison. Women jails ex exist exclusively for women prisoners, but uh, they are existing only in 13 states and UTs. Tamil Nadu, Kerala have three women jails each, and Rajasthan has two women jails. Bihar, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Orissa, Punjab, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, and Delhi have one women jail. The capacity of women inmates was the highest in Tamil Nadu, which was approximately 1600, followed by Rajasthan with 450. And you have Delhi with 400 and Punjab with 320 uh, as the authorized capacity. So these women jails house only the women. And mainly it is the women convicts who will be uh, there. The Bostel jails are the primary object is for the, them to ensure care and rehabilitation of young offenders, that is those between the age of 18 to 21 years of age. And they are kept under the Bostel Act. Uh, they are kept away from the contaminating atmosphere of prisons. 
uh, the one the young offenders is a huge challenge because you have to provide them with opportunities for vocational training and educational programs so that they are able to lead a law abiding life once they are released there are some states uh, which like tamil nadu and uh, himachal pradesh kerala maharashtra punjab which have uh, one bostel jail as such there will be some states which will have no bostel school and tamil nadu had the highest capacity for keeping the uh, inmates in bostel prisons bostel jail followed by punjab which was 500 capacity so these bostel institutions are again managed by the prison staff and they are set up under a special act as such though one would say if we look at critically that they are mainly having more of uh, more male inmates and no female inmate uh, there is no bostel school in any of the union territories and then we have another category which is the open jails what are the open jails prisoners who are normally life convicts who have had a good behavior satisfying certain norms prescribed under the prison rules they are admitted to the open prisons with minimum security and they are mainly engaged in agricultural activities so 17 states have reported about the functioning of open jails in their jurisdiction rajasthan has the highest number of open prisons that is 29 and they know call it as open camps maharashtra has 13 and kerala and tamil nadu have three each gujarat and west bengal have two open prisons there are some states which have one open prison as such and they are like uh, karnataka madhya pradesh punjab telangana and uh, some states uh, will not have any open prison also there are some states which have an exclusively for women prisoners like maharashtra and kerala now and they are separated from the other prisoners another category is special jail special jail means a jail which is provided for a particular class of prisoners who are broadly as follows prisoners who have committed serious violations of prison discipline prisoners showing tendencies towards violence and aggression and prisoners who are difficult cases who are more of habitual offenders and difficult discipline cases from a group of professional organized criminals and these special jails are existing in 14 states and union territories having special jails Kerala has the highest number of special jails it has 16 and Tamil Nadu has 5 Telangana has 4 and West Bengal has 3 special jails as such and Puducherry has 2 jails each now as far as the available capacity in these jails is concerned the highest capacity for keeping prisoners in these special jails was in Bihar followed by Odisha and Kerala The provision for keeping female prisoners in these special jails is uh, was available in Tamil Nadu in West Bengal in Gujarat though the number is limited to approximately 80 and in some places as less as 12 or 16 each as such the other type of uh, jails may also be there and they are existing beside the jails discussed and only three states uh, namely Kerala Karnataka and Maharashtra they have one other category of jail in their jurisdiction and the capacity was the highest in karnataka which was 250 with kerala 142 and maharashtra 28 how do we get to know this information this is available in the prison statistics which are published by the ncrb each year there are 1400 prisons with a 3 lakh uh, more than 3 lakh capacity and against the authorized capacity the actual prison population in india was found to be approximately 4 lakh 20000 which is 114.4% of the occupancy rate and some of the prisons in fact are very old they are built during the british period and uh, they do not meet the current requirements of minimum standards as laid down in the national and international norms and you have uh, them some of them which are been constructed more than a uh, 100 years old and the living conditions uh, inside such prisons they need to be improved Uh, if we look at the authorized capacity and the prevalent capacity uh, we find that there are some prisons which uh, a number of prisons we have seen an increase in capacity but also an increase in numbers and uh, overcrowding is a major challenge to prison administration because it results in a security problem it will result in a number of safety issues health and hygiene get affected 
obviously in a prison which is overcrowded is not able to cater to all the prisoners and in fact in some prisons you find that prisoners are taking uh, turns to sleep because the prison is so overcrowded one barrack will be housing if let's say a uh, hundred prisoners they will not have place to move and it may lead to a serious uh, problem in terms of prisoner violence uh, we find that uh, prison overcrowding is a major cause of uh, human rights violation in the prisons because the standards are not met and health and sanitation also gets affected now when do we say that a prison is overcrowded overcrowding is a situation in which more inmates are staying than the sanction strength let's say a prison has a capacity of 500 inmates and you have 1000 prisoners staying there so that means an overcapacity there is the prison is overcrowded to double the extent and this we have seen is uh, one of the biggest challenges which we are facing because it results in uh, lack of privacy lack of hygiene and even lack of sleep uh, keeping this uh, that the human rights of prisoners that uh, you need to have basic human maintain human dignity inside the prison that uh, steps should be taken so that reasonable space and facilities are available to the prisoners who are lodged inside the prison and for this purpose special attention is now being given to the modernization of jails more funds are being allocated to increase the infrastructure in prisons uh, occupancy rate occupancy rate is defined as the number of inmates staying in jails against the authorized capacity for 100 inmates in other words if occupancy rate of any jail is 100 that means the number of inmates are as per the authorized capacity of the jail overcrowding in the jail means occupancy rate is more than 100 now you will see that occupancy rate in 2015 has increased slightly from the previous years and despite that the fact that the authorized capacity has increased we have had uh, more prisons coming up new prisons have been made but still the overcrowding problem remains so the total prison population it consists of two, one third convicts and two third are the under trials the unsentenced population uh, so one of the reasons that overcrowding is still continuing is that because we are still having 66 to 6, 70 percent of the prison population consisting of under trials rather than convicts and if we look at sex wise composition 96 percent 95.6 were male and 4.4 percent were females which shows that we have a less female population in the country and uh, women uh, prisoners proportion has remained between four to five percent since the last almost a decade but their numbers may be less but the uh, issues of women prisoners are highly significant the situation is that the facilities and the infrastructures must meet the gender specific uh, requirements and these have been specified in the Bangkok rules of United Nations which have uh, looked at what the minimum standards are for the treatment of women prisoners uh, a number of issues in fact we find that in some of the prisons not every prison uh, will be overcrowded maybe one prison is overcrowded or maybe one barrack is more overcrowded than the other so let's say a prison will have uh, will not be overcrowded but the women's barrack which has a capacity of 30 inmates will have women almost 60 or 70 women inmates so that barrack is going to be overcrowded and this issue is something which is a serious challenge to the prison administration of the country because uh, then the situation becomes that the situation is almost unlivable prison conditions and we find that uh, the capacity has increased but uh, they, uh, the highest overcrowding in fact has continued to remain uh, in some of the states like Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh is a state which has an overcrowding of almost 234 percent. Delhi despite the number of uh, uh, new prisons that have been made has an overcrowding of 226 percent so, which is highly highly uh, more than what the authorized capacity is. Meghalaya has 177% of overcrowding. UP, Uttar Pradesh have more than 150% uh, of overcrowding. Uh, some of the states like even Uttarakhand because they have not uh, really made new prisons so they have 113% uh, 130 overcrowding. 
Punjab has 117. Uh, so there are a number of states which have a huge problem of overcrowding. Some states have reduced overcrowding now because of the number of prisons that have been made. These include Haryana, West Bengal and Rajasthan, which is almost 102 percent. And uh, a number of uh, them, because they have added on, made new prisons there, they have less problem of overcrowding. Every state does not have a women prison, so sometimes you'll find that the women prison is more overcrowded. And the occupancy rate has shown a slight decline uh, over the years, but uh, it is still almost consistent. Though we find that the number of prisons, uh, new prisons were built, but some of the old prisons have been also closed down. And this is an interesting phenomena which we are noticing now because you find that uh, as new prisons have come up, so also there has been uh, the challenge of having more staff which is required to run these prisons. And uh, a number of uh, states are also taking measures to uh, incorporate uh, new ways of managing overcrowding by having double storied buildings. So the space is uh, the same, but then the more numbers can be accommodated in double storied uh, prisons. In eight states, the inmate population is still was still more than the available capacity, although the overcrowding had declined. So let us say the overcrowding, which was more than uh, 300, has been reduced to 270, but still it remains. So it's not necessary that uh, overcrowding uh, uh, is reduced totally as such, despite the fact that new prisons came up. Uh, we also find that uh, uh, there, uh, the maximum overcrowding is in the district jails. It's not there in the central prisons. It's not there in the open jails. Overcrowding is more prevalent in district jails with 131% overcrowding, whereas central jails have 116% overcrowding. Now, how do you reduce overcrowding? There are two strategies that are normally used. One is that you build more prisons, you add to the capacity of prison administration, and it is found to be a short-term strategy. The problem again is not uniform in all the prisons. As, as, as I mentioned that you will find that district prisons will have more, whereas the, there will be some prisons which have no overcrowding at all. And we also find that 54% of prisoners who are sentenced are those who are sentenced for life-term imprisonment. And you have 12% who are sentenced for a long term of 10 to 13 years. And then you have a number which is for 9.5% 9, 9 who are those who are sentenced to 7 to 9 years. Uh, if we look at the imprisonment rate in our country, in India the imprisonment rate is very low, it's 32 per 1 lakh of the population. Can you uh, guess which country has the highest rate of imprisonment? Uh, it is countries like United States, which had uh, an imprisonment rate of 720, which has now fallen to 666. Russia has 430 uh, per 1 lakh population. So these are the countries which have a high incarceration rate, uh, though they may not be really overcrowded, but the there is every possibility that uh, this overcrowding is there. The, this kind of uh, high incarceration rate is also reflecting the penal philosophy in terms of having more laws which are specifying a higher incarceration. Let's say the law of three strikes and you're out, the California state had a high overcrowding because of this aspect that more persons were going inside the prison. So the strategy of having building more prisons, adding to the accommodation does not reduce the overcrowding unless and until a strategy is made to reduce the numbers going inside the prison and that we call as the front end strategy, which is to reduce the number of persons through having an alternatives to imprisonment. To have uh, prison buildings and to, because as I mentioned earlier, that we have a number of uh, prisons which were made during the British era and they need, they were old prisons. We had the government of India came up with a modernization scheme where the central government uh, invested money in terms of improving the prison conditions. Uh, the central government under the non-planned scheme of modernization of prisons which had a total outlay of 1800 crore 
and uh, the central government shared 75% uh, of the cost, 25% of the cost was to be borne by the state government in terms of looking at uh, some aspects which was to decongest the jails. One was through construction of new prisons. Second was expand the capacity of the existing prisons. Existing prisons which are already there could ex add more barracks and to improve the living condition of prisoners and also the prison staff. It is important because the same old building will be there housing the inmates and also you will have the prison staff living in the same premises. And sometimes those barracks are where the staff is living are very really unlivable. So this scheme of modernization, uh, it was thought that it will add on to 125 new prisons would come up and uh, approximately 1579 additional uh, barracks would be made in the existing prisons and new staff quarters to the extent of almost uh, 8500 prison staff quarters were expected to be constructed. They have been constructed by the state governments. A number of uh, states took benefit of this modernization scheme. Are, uh, in fact, uh, they are pressing the central government to continue the scheme into the second phase as well. Apart from this, we have the Finance Commission of India, which has also provided funds to certain states to construct new prisons and upgrade the infrastructure. And the 13th Finance Commission has uh, also granted uh, rupees uh, 609 crore over a period uh, from 2011 to 2015 for eight states. And these are the states which gave in their plans to the uh, Commission for better infrastructure. Uh, the more and more states now, in fact, want to have uh, this scheme of modernization continue because uh, they face financial constraints in bringing about improvement in the physical infrastructure. One of the major problems that prison administration faces is that it's a low priority area. Uh, the state government does not really uh, consider much in investment in prisons because it's thought to be a dead end investment. Uh, without realizing that prisons reflect uh, the way we deal with prisons is a reflection of our society. And it is only when the government start uh, viewing them with a priority basis that improvements in prison infrastructure will take place. Uh, we need to look at having more humane conditions. Right now we have the uh, revision in the UN standard minimum rules for the treatment of prisoners by the name of Mandela rules, which were adopted in 2016. Uh, India is also signatory to those and those rules, the basic premise and the basic premise of uh, human dignity, maintaining human dignity runs through all the rules, 126 rules which have been revised. A uh, number of uh, judgments of the Supreme Court have also focused on having a proper dignified uh, environment for persons who are in their custody. The Sunil Batra judgment uh, of the Supreme Court said that prison is the punishment that a person in a prison does not become a non-person. And uh, right now we are also having a PIL known by the name of INRI Inhuman Conditions in 1382 prisons where the Supreme Court of India is looking at the issue of overcrowding due to under trials and uh, the monitoring committees, under trial review committees uh, have been set up in each district to monitor and to look at the under trials who can be uh, removed, who can be let free after they have uh, spent more than half the term of their maximum sentence as under section 436A of the CRPC. And uh, this public interest litigation uh, in fact is a continuing one because it has also focused on deaths in custody and also is focusing on two other issues which relate to providing better facilities and also focusing on prison staff issues and their training part of it. So the Supreme Court has played a very, very important role in bringing in prison reforms in the country by focusing on both the physical infrastructure, the legal part of it in terms of right to speedy trial to the under trials and also looking at maintaining human dignity inside the prisons when it has emphasized that the rights of prisoners do not end at the prison gates or behind prison bars and uh, it is hoped that there will be improvements in the prison infrastructure, there will also be improvements in the way the prisons are being run in our country. Thank you.